Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Thanks so much for clicking a new video of mine. It means a lot that you guys keep clicking. If you guys keep clicking, I'll keep making. And we have our power rankings. We, I've been lacking, you know, in the past week, two weeks on power rankings videos. That They've been coming in on Monday, but nonetheless, they are in fact here. Um, and we, we have to rank these 11 players. This is after the merge episodes. So we have a lot more, you know, new, new info. Not the best merge episode in the world, but not, you know, the worst at it also. I mean, I feel like it was, eh, you know, it's just there isn't really much there. Um, but hopefully it can develop it into a better season. It has a lot of potential with specifically the editing being really on point this season. I'm I'm actually curious. Do, do you feel like the merge episode was a letdown? And if so, how much of a letdown do you feel like it was? Uh, well, I mean, I don't say it was let down. It was kind of boring, but like, I'm not going to blame the show because I mean, for me at least, right. It was going to be, it was always either going to be, um, what Josh or Brandon, right? Since right. they got paired on different tribes, it's like, well, you know. Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you know, this is what you guys get for, for watching our power rankings. If you guys remember last week, we both had Josh and Brandon in, in our bottom two spots, or at least I had them there, and I think Sky had them almost there. I had him, um, yeah, I had him, yeah, right, exactly. And 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 so it's like, it's it, to me, it's like we, we both thought it was going to be one of those guys because they had huge targets on their back. Um, I had Josh lower, I believe Sky also had Josh at last place, and so. We really did think that it was going to be Josh or Brandon. And when they got separated in the groups, it just became obvious that whichever group lost and was, you know, going to be vulnerable was, in fact, going to, you know, see their their Brandon or their Josh respectively get voted out. Um, and so I, I really do think it was a matter of the wrong group winning, because I do think that if the branding group had lost, it would have been a closer and more competitive vote because yeah. there's bigger threats in that group. Whereas with the Josh vote, it's just Yam Yam versus Josh, which is not very fun to watch because Yam Yam is clearly a better survivor player. I mean, he just needs, it's, it really isn't even close to me. Um, and on top of that, of course, we, we saw Josh come in and uh, really ruin his game immediately. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I, I didn't really find it that entertaining, but I also didn't think it was the worst just because the, the pre-merge really did build up a lot of storylines. Um, and I do, you know, I'm very, very curious to see how the, these fake idols play out, um, how, you know, how big, big threats like Brandon and Danny are going to play out in the game. You know, people like Carson and, of course, the the, the, the crazy people in Yam Yam and Carolyn. There's definitely interesting like storylines there it's just a matter of if they can play it out and it ends up being like a satisfying ending with this satisfying winner i think at this point for me as long as lauren and jamie don't win i'm pretty much satisfied uh, like I, there isn't one other person here even heidi for me is like fine like but like jamie and lauren winning would, would be disappointing for two very different reasons for me jamie would be d disappointing here just because she's so annoying to the point where it's actually grates on, on my nerves. Um, I guess how, how how you guys see Carolyn, because for, for those who don't know, Sky and Bitter and all of the, the podcast you know, co-hosts, they all really, really don't like Carolyn. And that's exactly how I feel about Jamie. I just, uh, it's just her existence is very angering. Uh, and yeah, then of course, Lauren, Lauren winning, it would be annoying because she, this is like the, the, you know, Survivor 41 all over again, where the winner got two confessionals the, the entire season. Hmm. Oh, he muted himself. Yeah, guys, I agree with whatever you said. Um, I trying to buy time right now because I don't know really what to say. This season, like, I think the the pre merge is set up like a lot of good fate. You know, you're trash at pod, uh, podcast. <laughs> I, 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 you, you had to, you had to host for 15 seconds. No, bro. I, I like the first five. I wasn't oh even paying attention. God. I was like, what? You're absolutely abysmal. What, what'd you oh my do? God, there's no, Why'd you, you leave? You could never have a podcast. Why'd you leave? I, I left because I, I had to go re refill my Sprite bottle. That's right. Yeah. Sprite, Sprite cranberry. That's right. But you, no, I, I, you had five, 10 seconds to cover and you were like, uh, well, uh, uh, well, <laughs> like, bro, that's so placement. goofy, bro. That's so goofy. You're goofy. Okay, anyways, it's let's get into the power ranking. Of course, unlike some other Survivor podcasts, we, we go from worst to best. Um, and, of course, that means players who aren't going to win, players who are goats. Uh, of course, going up to the best players, the players who have the best chances at, you know, a, a final tribal, you know, a, a winner pick per se. Uh, and so in that order, I'm starting with, with my uh, number 11, which is Brandon. I mean, we, we kind of said it last week. It's Josh or Brandon. And now that Josh is gone, it really does leave Brandon in a tough spot here. It just feels like the edit, especially the, the scene of him and Danny kind of talking over Carolyn 
and being really being shown as the villains there. I think Danny's okay because his, his edit's bigger and he he's kind of uh, immune to, to to that kind of stuff a bit more. Yeah. He's clearly going to be here longer. So where does that put Brandon? Someone who we know is a giant threat, and then on top of that, his edit is also. I guess kind of threatened it in a way. It just it is not good at all for, for Brandon here. And I, the only thing that he really has going for him that the, the next person on my list doesn't have, which is Kane, is at least Brandon has some friends. Like, like Brandon does have allies, uh, as, I guess, really in Danny. Uh, I, I don't see like anyone who said his name yet, I guess. But to me, like the reason that Kane is higher up is just because like Brandon is a giant threat and it's just common sense to vote him out. Whereas in Kane, to mm-hmm. me, it's just someone you'd vote out because you're like, well, you know, no one likes him, I guess. Like, it's just it's not a real reason to vote Kane out, you know, and that's that's mostly why Kane is at 10 for me and Brandon's at 11. What's mm-hmm. your 11 and 10? Well, you know, I can't do it. Some... So at 11, I got Jamie because she's terrible at Survivor and she also is very annoying because she keeps saying that she's the most valuable player in the game for some reason, which like mm-hmm. you're not <laughs> like not even close. Mm-hmm. You're yeah, delusional. She's, just, she's like, like if, if like scratching nails on a chalkboard was a human, that that w- would totally be Jamie. I mean, it's, I agree. It's yeah. It's how did she get through the casting process? Is what I need to know because there's like annoying in a funny way, in in a like a endearing way. There's annoying in like a like a confrontational, like a Debbie type of way. There's annoying in like an egotistical type of way. That that's coach. There's all types of annoying. Uh, there's annoying like an arrogant way. Think like Russell Hans, Boston, Rob. There's all types of annoying. That's great for, for reality TV. But the annoying that isn't great is the Jamie annoying. That is the worst type of annoying because it just is that. It's it's annoying. It's it's annoying as hell. So I I would really implore casting to look into casting better on annoying casting choices and not people like Jamie. But yeah, I digress. All right, uh, eleven and ten. Uh, my let me see. My eleven was Jamie. Yeah, my ten is Kane. Oh, so, okay, okay. We uh, we're we're, we're matching at ten. So yeah. you don't have Bryn in, in in your bottom two, huh? No, I don't. No. Okay, well, I, I think he bought himself some time with the the the, the uh, I think a little bit of steam is going to be let off of him with the uh, with the Josh. I mean, I could see that. that. It's just like at the end of the day, he's going to go in the next. Plus, like, has so, anyone actually said like, "Hey, let's go up with"? Yeah, but we've like, I mean, is that like a requirement? We're in my modern survivor. Uh, yes. Your, your, your name can get brought up five minutes for a tribal for the first time Ooh. in the whole season. And I mean, you a silly Billy, okay? Look, the thing is, <laughs> right? Like, I just, I don't know, man. I feel like, you know, it is new school survivor. So it's like, you know, maybe he, I I think he might get used as a meat shield by Danny or something. Uh, I think that's the best thing that, that could happen to him is he, he gets used as a meat shield and then just wins out af- after like six or seven. Yeah, and then wins it's the possible. Game. It's plausible, but I mean, he's just not going to win at that. I mean, I, I don't know. I, it, I'm not, I don't have him incredibly high. Like, I don't have Brandon incredibly high. Yeah, I, I got you. I just, I to not have Brandon in the bottom. I mean, I have him at the, the complete bottom. So it's a, definitely a different perspective, but I totally get what you mean. Like, this could have yeah. bought him time with someone like Kane staying in the game who seems exactly. to be on, on his side. Um, and yeah. also, he, he, he seems, seems to be friends with powerful players like mm-hmm. Danny. Um, so definitely some some p- potential there for sure. It's just a matter of if Danny mm-hmm. can stay in power and and not get played. Because if Danny gets mm-hmm. played, the first player going out is Brandon. All right, my number nine uh, and eight really uh, is uh, Lauren and Heidi. So uh, Lauren, I, the reason she's as low is has nothing to do with her game. It's what we we aren't seeing, which is her. We, we're not seeing her edit at all. She's gotten nothing. I mean, like I'm I'm sure her her confessional account is like uh, I guess not the most ridiculous thing ever. Um, but it, as far as like just watching the season, like a firsthand view of it, it feels like she's not even on the show. Like she's completely purpled, even though her, I'm sure her, her confessional count is probably like regular. I just like, where's her? Like, she's not part of the, the season's story at all. Like, like Yam Yam is a part of it. Mass is a mm-hmm. part of it. Carson, Carolyn, hell, Jamie's a part of it. You know, with, with the fake idol thing, Matt and Franny, you know, with, with, with their showmans, Heidi at least got like something in, in an episode of, about, about being the, the, the swing vote. Kane, he's like the Dungeons and Dragons guy and Brandon, the first episode. And then he's also a giant threat. Like, where does that leave? Like, Lauren, I, I just don't, what is her? She's a single she's mom. Nobody. Like, she's nobody. You're, you're, you don't have any story. Like she, she has an archetype. She, she's like the, the you know, literally like a, a, a team mom type of a, a archetype where, where she is like that, that mom figure, I guess. But she's so young. 
and it really doesn't fit her that well at least i really don't know why she was cast here i, I get it where she's supposed to be like an inspiration quote unquote or whatever but she just ended up being a bad character on, on this season yeah. and if mm -hmm. she wins that will be the most disappointing conclusion yeah. to this season and if she wins in production sitting here saying this is a great season production's on some serious fucking level one drugs because there's no way that lauren wins in this season is somehow satisfying i'm sorry it, it's yeah. just not gonna it, it can't happen mm -hmm. we will just have to see oh and then uh at eight i, eight, I have heidi just because like whoa kind of for the same reason she's her edit's a bit mid now it's better because we, we at least got like a scene that was like really, really positive. And I think it was episode three when Claire goes home, when they basically show her being the, the swing vote, making the, the the right choice to vote out Claire, someone who was not benefiting her game a, a, as much as Danny uh, and Josh were at that time. And on top of that, she's friends with Danny. Again, very, very important. Danny has power here. So yeah. we'll just have to see how, how it goes. Who do you have at nine and eight? And I got Brandon. So like I had him like a three. It's not like, you know. And then yeah. for reasons, and then uh, eight, I agree with you, Lauren. Like, who is she? Like, do, is she even on the season? Who like, are who, you? Like, who are you? Who? Like, you're a single mother. Like, you got knocked up in the middle of the Like, <laughs> you're a single mother. That, that, that's good. I like that. Yeah. 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 So I don't I, doing, see. Man? It's it's all up in the air. Not I'm helping the stereotype. Like, come on, man. I'm I'm changing where Jamie is on my list, but I won't say where where I put her. Yet. She is not helping the stereotype. So like, <laughs> she's not helping the stereotype. And mm -hmm. uh your eight or no no that my eight, that yeah, was one. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Okay, my seven and six go together like two peas in a pod because it's Matt and Franny. Um <gasps> okay, anyways. Um yeah, it's Matt and Franny. So uh yeah. Uh, Wait, yeah, which first. one? Which one is who's lower? Oh, uh Matt's at seven and for Franny's at six. I put I put Franny higher because she's a better player and their edits are starting to even out now as they like hit the merge. Before Matt was getting a bit more content, but now it's starting to even out. And I do think that is benefiting Franny kind of because it shows that Matt's edit is not slowing down, but just kind of meeting up with hers. And now they're on equal territory. And when they're on like equal edit territory, it's any man's game here because I do think Franny's a better, better player than Matt is. I mean, pretty clearly. Mm -hmm. um, so I, it, it just leaves Matt in a tough spot. And it also leaves uh, Franny in a tough spot. But the reason they're not at the bottom here is because they don't seem to be in a tough spot in the game at this point. Their edits are looking pretty decent and both like winner possible, I guess. Um, and as far as the, their spot in the game, they seem to, to be friends with Danny, which is good. So they haven't, you know, taken off Danny. No one knows about the relationship and they're, they're, they're making friends with everybody. And I think that especially the jury will really, really like both of them, really, but, but especially Franny. Um, so I, I think they're in pretty good spots. The reason that they are in the middle is because there's no winner equity on them necessarily yet as far as their spot in the game. So we'll just have to see. Five and six. I no, agree. No, sorry, six and seven. I agree. I got Bling and Chip at seven. And okay. Franny at six. That's exactly what I have. Wow. Okay. I know. Isn't that like crazy? Like, Would whoa. you ever see like a world where, where Franny could go out first? I, I It's tough. I, I know. Yeah. But like, yeah. It's, see, it's like with, with Matt being, being so bad poor at the game i think just in, in a vacuum i think he's probably in a vacuum one of one of the worst players on this entire cast exactly that's why they got out franny before yeah <laughs> yeah true true well uh, see like franny's a big threat but she's also not because like no one looks at franny and thinks threat until you get to the end i think franny could, could be a threat at like six or five but until well, then maybe. she's not a very threatening maybe. player at all so we'll just have to see number five oh, no, a i know it's gonna go crazy this what anyways i have number five uh which is jamie uh I, I don't know how she got this high but uh, listen at the end of the day she like what, what what she's saying is not completely true she's not the mvp of the game or whatever but she is clearly knows the most people in the entire game and she does have friends and i don't see anyone even coming close to targeting her until final nine eight i mean who, who would target uh, why why would you target jamie she's the worst person to target she talks way way too much she's very annoying she will get on, on people's nerves sooner or later and you can probably beat her at the end because old women don't do well in survivor because they just simply don't play good games oh, you know there's this there's this idea that that everyone says oh older women they have it so unfair because they, they can never win because they're seen as old and sweet. And then when they make moves, they people don't like them. It's like, no, no. At the end of the day, old, old women don't do well in Survivor because they're overall, on average, not as good players 
as the younger players are. It's just how it goes. And the, really the same thing goes for o- older guys. It, the, o- like older people in general on, on Survivor don't do as well uh, because they're, they're usually not playing the game as aggressively as people uh, in in their 30s and, and 40s. So I, I would definitely implore people to, to look at Jamie's edit more as somewhat of, of a threat to do well in the game. But as far as winner equity, it's it's just not there for, for Jamie. So we'll just have to see. Real. Number five. Uh, me? Oh, yeah. Bro. No, the, the the other guy. All I'm saying is, ahead. like, Pondros going to be like. What the know? heck? Yo, that's crazy. Franny and Matt at Ponderosa would go hard. Literally hard. Well, I got Heidi at fifth because, honestly, maybe okay. she's just a little too high up on the list. But it's like, is Heidi going to go next episode? Like, no, you know. You know, it, it's funny. To, to to this point, aside from Jamie and Heidi being flipped, I think we, we, we have basically the exact same people now. So we all – so we – we From the same both reason. have in our in our top four in no specific order Carolyn Massa Carson Yam Yam. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Jamie. Heidi's like she's there and like she's a friend. I mean, she did have that you know split belt thing, which like oh resume because you know freaking right. anything can be on your resume nowadays. But right. um, yeah, no, true. Yeah, it, she did that. She's in a good position. Like I don't think anyone's gonna be like, hey guys, we should get out Heidi. Like what? Right. Like, it, 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 it. <laughs> Look at you! You're finally taking my my uh my my, my uh, from from across the country. There we go. We're gonna finally get it to Texas. There we go. That's good. But I I don't know. It's just the thing with 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 her and you know like Heidi is that she does not have the best edit in the world. Like Lauren's edit's bad. Her edit's just eh, you know. So little bit, little bit. We'll just have to see if if it improves. My. No, like I feel like after four, the players kind of get a lot better. Like for me, yeah. my, my my eleven through five is pretty definite. It was never going to be anyone else. And the top four really are truly the best four players left in, in the game. Uh, and now it really goes off of the other things in the game that are important, which is edit and threat level. And that's why for me, Jam Jam is at four. His edit and threat level are not as good as Carson Massa and, and Carolyn's edits are. Uh, and also, you know, as far as the threat level, Yam Yam was a target this episode, which is not very, very good for him, of course. Um, and uh, unlike Masai, I feel like Jam Jam to a certain point, like people have pointed him out and vocally said that he is a big threat in the game. He also had the, 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 this duel with Josh. Now, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. We, we saw it be a good thing for Gable at the merge because he got out his op immediately. But it can also be a bad thing, you know, because um, I feel like when, when you have a big enemy, it shows like that that aggressive side of you. So I, it's curious. But at the end of the day, he's in this top four because he is a top four player on the season, undoubtedly. So we'll just, you know, I guess have to see kind of uh, number four for you. That's kind of crazy because I got yam yam. Oh, my God. You're literally, copy. You're, 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 literally, you're literally copycatting me. Oh, my God. No, I feel like our number one so three might be a little. Uh, I, I always feel like yam yam always like easily the number four best player at, in the top four. You know, yeah. I feel like Danny, Carolyn, Carson, like really yeah. it's a top three. Well, top I don't see. Four. I don't think Carolyn's a better player than yam yam. I, I, again, like I said, well, not a better player, but like you know, I said, better edit these are the, the 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 four best players, and from here, it's about everything but the game for me. It's, it's all about edits and and also, of course, threat levels. That's that's how I'm ranking from four on. But yeah, you I do agree that if I was ranking on pure just like gameplay, like who can play Survivor the best, my my ranking would be Carolyn at four. Uh, it, be, be yeah, it, 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 it would be. <laughs> It would be probably Carson at three and Yam Yam at two and then Mass at one. Yep. But well, we'll, just, like we'll just have to Carolyn's see though. number 18 when it comes to game play. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I know. I, I think Matt's probably the worst player on this season just in a vacuum. Um, True. I, I think all the girls who got voted out pre merge are not necessarily actually bad players. And then We're I think runners. Bruce, we, does Bruce even count here? I don't even know. He died. So I don't even know. Mm. Um, and then uh, Gathew, obviously not a, a bad player here. So. I don't know. We'll just have we'll just have to see. Uh, number three for me, right? Yes. Number three is Massa. So I I, I have him out of my top two, uh, simply because he is a giant threat and he's going to get voted out. I I don't think either of us think that Day is going to win just based on his edit. It's it was almost too good during the pre-merge, and now it's starting to tank very very slowly. It's going over the the, the top of the, the the roller coaster's edge, and it's about to start flying down. Whether it takes three episodes for, 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 for the descent to start, or it takes five, or it takes one. Eventually, he's going to get loaded out, 
And when you're going to get voted out, that's not really good for your winning chances, is it? So, yeah, we'll just have to see with Danny. But, you know, that's who I have at three. Who do you have at three? Bro, I have Mr. Massa at three, bro. Oh, my gosh. You are literally culturally <laughs> appropriating my power it, rankings. List. It is. It is, though, like. He probably would actually be number two, maybe even number one, if that one scene with Carolyn didn't happen. Because it's like it, it is crazy. If you're an op to Carolyn, it's like I don't know, bro. It's, it's like, well, it's it's like it's like being like an op to like John Wick. Like it, yeah. it, it, if you're an enemy of John Wick, you're not an enemy for of John Wick for very long. Mm-hmm. You know, you, you don't want to be Carolyn's opposition unless it's like Final Four. Then all bets are off with with edits at that point. You know, she 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 could be the the, the Final Four fire making boot, I guess. Um, but I, I don't know. It's just it's so weird with with Carolyn. It's so odd. So I would be really, really curious to see if Carolyn eventually does fall to somebody or if she does end up you know, going on to win the game completely. Well, we'll just, mm-hmm. you know, I guess have to see kind of. Yeah. You yeah. number three, uh, three for you or two for, for me, two for you. My three was day. OK, my number two. Can you give yours first? Your are your, your two and one. Uh, mine. Yeah. My two is Carson. Okay, explain. Uh, should it be number one? Probably. Uh, but <laughs> you know. Yeah, I, 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 I can say now. I have the opposite. I have Carson at one and Carolyn at two. Explain why you have Carolyn ahead of Carson. Just edit, bro. It's like I, I can't, it. you know. True. And like, I get why you put Carson above Carolyn too. But for me, it's just like. I don't know, like, is, yeah. I, I, but it's also like, there's no way it's Carolyn, right? Because of the edit, right? Like, it can be, right. but it's, it's like. It's, it feels too obvious, but then at the same time, like, we've had obvious, more obvious winner edits in the past. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't, like, obviously, like, they've had a lot of fake outs in the past few seasons. I feel like part of the reason why they've put like a season is because the winner is so obvious. But then again, if it's not Carolyn, I wouldn't be shocked because at the end, at the end of the day, her edit is very obvious. So it's like. It, it feels a bit kind of telegraphed going into to the end game here. Um, but at the same time, it does feel right for, for Carolyn to, to win this season. And I would not be mad at a, a Carolyn win here. I'd be a um, bit peeved, if I'm being honest. Because it's just like I wouldn't, it so I wouldn't be, be, be peeved at all. Just because, like, would you rather than, like, Carolyn it, it causes all of the, the, like, the drama on this. Like, like I, I don't know how you guys would I think putting Carolyn her on. confessional being the first thing in the season is a bit much if she wins. I, I get it. I get it. I, I agree. It's a, it's a bit corny. But then again, it's like, if, if that's your biggest complaint, like. But, um, it, but it's just like, don't do that again, respectfully. <laughs> I get it, but it's like, you know, there's the first and the last for, for everything. So hopefully you're right. Maybe they, they don't put winter confessionals literally before the, the marooning season starts. starts. Yeah, literally the entire season has not started. It's like, oh, getting... what do I, is this, I, I speak into a microphone? Oh, what? Oh my God. It's really? like, do you not know the basic the, understanding of the film? Is a confessional? Do I like eat the mic uh, for breakfast? Like, it's like, Carolyn, you speak. What? I what? speak? Okay. <laughs> like, bro, like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I have Carolyn at two and Carson at one. I, I kind of said this last week for, for the exact same reason. Uh, Carson's just a better player. I mean, he's a better mm-hmm. player than Carolyn. His edit is not nearly as good, but it's not bad by any means. It's just not historic like Carolyn's is. And then as far as his, his uh, threat level goes, he's a much, I think, going uh, under, under the radar, uh, much better than than Carolyn is. Whereas in Carolyn's attached to Yam Yam, who's a big threat in the game. Carson, he's attached to everybody, but in a perfect way where it, it, it's not like Jamie, where he has like these fake relationships there, everybody literally to the point where Jamie has a fake idol. Carson has real relationships with, I think I can count on my hand, five, six people on this season, which is great. And he hasn't made promises yet, which is also good. And uh, I think a side way, he, he doesn't have an idol, does he? No. Okay, but uh, like really, uh, to me, uh, his only flaw is not having an idol. That's the only flaw in his whole game. And if there's anyone who, who can like outplay not having an idol, I think it's Carson on this season. And again, I, I do think he's a top two, three player on, on this entire season, which does help a lot. So I have Carson at one here. For true, yeah. What do you think of 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 Carson? Like, I, I'm I'm curious on your opinion. I mean, you might, uh, uh, bro. <laughs> I, I think Carson's probably build, the best but... player when you like. Look at the mathematics, the statistics. Right. I think Carson yeah. is probably the best player on this season. Right. I mean, he's probably one of the only reasons why Carolyn might still be in the game. But um, uh. I mean, he could have gotten rid of her right at that one tribal council um, early or in the game, but he didn't. He blindsided the other people who have you already forgotten it. their name because yeah. So I, I think he's a good player. I think 
like Carolyn's basically like she's like, oh my god, I love Carson. I'm gonna eat Carson's. I mean, like, but like what? she's like on his side, like right, like on his side is crazy, bro. Carolyn, well, like he's know. not her op, right? You so he's gonna if, eat his what? Well, as long as he's not Carolyn's op, I think Listen. he can get pretty far into the game. Am on I, that am I note, wrong? on am that I note, wrong? <laughs> on that I'm note, I'm gonna correct. ask you one and very important question, Sky. Uh, What's going on in the Skylander universe? Oh, well, man. I mean, that one Survivor video is still only like a week old. So if you want to do it, yes, check it out. It's New video bad. coming out on Sunday on the Skyner's channel. Oh, my God. Might be a long one. The script's like 11 oh. pages long, and I'm still Shlong. making it. It's a long video. A Anyways, video. yeah, guys, go check out Sky stuff. He makes amazing content, several <laughs> different channels. Again, none of this happens without you guys. Without you guys, we're all just weird guys speaking into weird microphones. And that's how I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Peace.